Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, and today I'm joined by J.P. Harrington. And today we're going to talk about bounce, and few people in the world know more about bounce than J.P. here. J.P., uh, world-renowned club builder, and of course builder of the J.P. Premier Wedges here. And so we're honored to have J.P. here to discuss bounce with us. So J.P., um, first of all, thank you for joining us. And um, for the, you know, the casual golfer out there that doesn't quite fully understand bounce, how would you, let's get into it that way, let's first explain what bounce is. Right, like... Big question, what is bounce? Well, it's a confusing topic. It's really confusing for everybody. Um, I, the casual golfer, but also people in, in the industry, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Um, you'll see, you know, um, a bounce number on a, on a wedge. Yeah. And what does that mean? Um, but ultimately, bounce is the resistance to digging, right? Okay. There's the bounce angle, yes, and that's part of the design of it, but then there's like effective bounce and how that wedge interacts with the ground, okay. right? And there's more that to it than just the bounce angle. Um, the bounce angle is, is definitely one element that controls that resistance to digging, but there's other elements. There's the sole width. The wider that sole width, um, the more surface area it has mm -hmm. to resist digging. So okay. the wider the sole width, the higher the effective bounce. Another element is that bounce angle. So that controls that leading edge height, that measurable distance from the ground vertically up to that leading edge height. So it's key to have an optimal leading edge height at impact. So one, um, you don't stick that wedge in the ground mm -hmm. or conversely, you don't bounce it, literally bounce it off the ground into the ball and hit that thin blade shot. So the key is to have an optimal leading edge height. There's, so there's three real elements that control that. One, we talked about sole width. Mm -hmm. The wider the sole width, the more surface area it has to resist digging. The higher the bounce angle, the higher the leading edge will, will be, um, which will increase bounce. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly is camber. Camber is curvature. Um, it's kind of, it can be confusing what is curvature. It's just a, a fancy name for, for curvature. So okay. um, the more curvature you have on the sole, the more it increases effective bounce. So those, those three elements really play mm -hmm. a large role into that resistance to digging or how that wedge will actually interact with the ground at impact. Sure, and so now for golfers that hear all that information, trying to soak it all in right now, um, if maybe if, I bet there's a lot of golfers watching this that maybe have been uh, more or less ignoring what bounce is and how it impacts their game. So um, what would maybe be the punishments or the disadvantages for golfers that have really never considered bounce and maybe what they're missing out on? Right, so bounce again, that resistance to digging, the lower the bounce, uh, the more knife-like the wedge will be, okay. the more apt it will be to cut and dig into the ground much like a knife would. The higher the, the bounce, the more it's going to resist that digging, the more, let's say, blunted it will be. Um, okay. And so it depends on your, on your golf swing. You're, you know, a lot of people talk about that angle of attack, you know, mm -hmm. the steep angle of attack. Um, generally, yeah, you need higher bounce in those situations. Primarily, um, that steeper angle of attack or that descent to the golf ball also kind of couples with uh, sh forward shaft lean, right? So you're yeah. forward pressing. Well, as you do that, the more you forward press, the more that leading edge gets closer and closer to the ground, acting more like a knife, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're real steep and have a lot of forward press, that leading edge is going to be closer to the ground than, let's say, somebody that's a little shallower and kind of sweeps the ball yeah. and doesn't have that forward okay. press uh, at impact. And so that's a key driver to be like, I need high bounce mm -hmm. because I'm steeper and I have a lot of forward press because that leading edge gets closer to the ground and we need to offset that. And the goal is just to have that optimal leading edge height at impact to give you the consistent turf interaction and that forgiveness that you need to hit the shots. Um, so it's not, all, it's not all you, sometimes it is the way. <laughs> well, I know, and I mean, all this is, the idea is to hit clean contact directly, you know, as, as close as you can to the center of the face. And all the, the bounce, the leading edge, all those things impact that. And it's uh, those subtle things you don't maybe even like see sometimes with the naked eye unless you get really close, but they do matter a lot. And so uh, obviously someone like you uh, really pays attention to those details. Now, when you're building, for example, the JP Premier Wedges, um, what types of things are you putting onto the wedge, putting into the construction to make sure that the, the bounce is, you know, A, it kind of caters to a lot of different golfers out there, but also does create that clean and consistent turf interaction. Right, so the, the key drivers, that sole width, uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, what I like to do is I want to 
keep consistency throughout the wedge. I want everybody to benefit from JP Camber, which is this unique curvature mm -hmm. towards the leading edge. You'll notice that it's real rolled or a softened leading yeah. edge. So what that does is, one, it provides a real consistent interaction with the ground to create that real consistent divot so you know what it's going to do every time you, you hit it. Yeah. Um, what that, all that same consistency translates to forgiveness. So when you hit slightly behind the ball, that leading edge doesn't catch or, or dig um, and resulting in that fat or chunk shot. So you're going to get away with it a little bit more. It's going to want to slide. Um, so that pitch shot where you, you hit okay. a little behind the ball, you're going to typically hit it fat, leave it, you know, yeah. halfway, I'm guilty of that halfway one. to the hole. <laughs> this way you're going to get away with it. It's going to actually get closer to the hole um, and okay. you have a makeable putt. So, you know, touching base on, on that, on bounce, um, a lot of people talk bounce angle to get this, I need low bounce, you know, four degrees, eight yeah. degrees, 10, 14. Well, what does that really mean? That can get confusing, right? Um, all they're really doing with, with um, the bounce number is saying it's low bounce, mid bounce, or high bounce. I don't like to talk about the specific bounce angle because again, there's more elements, soul width, camber values yeah. that equate to um, the resistance to digging, right? Um, so you'll notice um, on the industry where if I take and I, I take a protractor and I, I actually measure measure the bounce angle mm -hmm. on, on, a, okay. on a wedge, let's say it's a, a, a low bounce wedge in the industry that they, they stamp four degrees on there. Yeah. Um, and I measure it, well that, that bounce angle could actually, is typically probably more like 15 degrees right but if somebody stamped 15 degrees on that wedge and they're like well that's that's a high bounce yeah um, but actually it, it depends on the sole width and the camera and all those sure. values mm -hmm. to equate to low bounce so um, if it says four degrees a lot of people you know the industry's doing that but they're all they're really saying is low low mid high yeah. and so that's what i do i just i call, talk low mid high effective bounce okay um and you know that's how i like to explain it because it is Confusing. Yeah, so I think you, you know, because you see, you know, in the industry, you see like, for example, a 12 degree bounce on a wedge. Um, but there can be different grinds where that sole, for example, could be really wide for a 12 degree, but also you could have a wedge that has 12 degrees bounce, but really narrow width exactly. of a sole. So that, right. those are completely different. Right, you know, I can wedges. make a wedge that has eight, two wedges that has eight, both having eight degrees of bounce, but I change one, one has a very wide sole of eight yeah. degree of bounce, more surface area, it's gonna resist digging. The other wedge, let's say I go a real narrow sole width with eight degrees of bounce, so that's gonna cut and dig like a knife. So I can make something super high bounce with eight degrees or super low bounce with eight degrees because we gotta take the other factors um, that make up that effective bounce or the resistance to digging. Okay, so now talking about wedge fitting now. So, um, you know, as a second swing, we love the, the club fitting uh, process and we try to get as many golfers as possible into clubs that fit their game. So when fitting someone four wedges for the jp rear wedges mm -hmm. um, what's the best way to do that in terms of dialing in someone what they need for bounce what they need um, on the salt for them to get the best turf interaction well the big driver is again getting that leading edge height at the optimal um, position at impact so it gives you that consistency and forgiveness that you need so you can hit all those shots on the course mm -hmm. now you know, through my through all my fitting that I've done and, and research and things like that, high speed video work. Um, at the end of the day, it boils down to um, that forward shaft lean for the variety of shots that you hit. Um, so people say you can't fit wedges indoors. Well, you actually you can because it's actually just a, a measurable um, element to you know you got to diagnose that to figure out yeah. where you're at. So uh, w one thing you can do, uh, what I offer here is. I put a sole sticker. I have this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a it's a, a sticker we can put on the sole. And because these premier wedges are precision milled, mm -hmm. we have this precision uh, this diamond pattern. So I know uh, if this marks at a certain diamond pat, uh, spot on that diamond exactly what level of forward press you are um, at impact, and that's going to reveal um, ultimately what bounce you're going to need. I like to do that with three shots. Mm -hmm. You like to do your full swing shot, which is going to reveal your true swing mechanics yep. and get that natural forward shaft sure. lean. So we, can, we want that marker, right? Um, and then the next one, I want to see your stock go-to pitch shot called 30 yard shot. Okay. However you like to do it, if you like to put it back in your stance, whatever, it doesn't matter to me, uh, we want to mark that. And then we can determine 
how much of a difference we have from that full swing shot to sure. a standard pitch shot. And then the last thing we want to do is see that kind of flop shot or that high lofted shot you're going to hit around the greens, okay. uh, get it high, land it soft, get that ultimately that dynamic loft or forward shaft lean or reverse shaft lean. Um, and those three shots are really going to dictate whether you need uh, mid bounce or high bounce, let's say in the, in the JP Premier. You might see um, some shots if you're pretty steep and you have that forward shaft lean and mm -hmm. you need high bounce, let's say on, on your, your go-to full swing stock hit shots. Um, and then if you're really versatile around the green, um, let's say a tour player for something like that, yeah. where really likes to open that face up, hit a variety of shots. That's where you might want to drop down to a mid bounce for a lob wedge if those shots are a big priority in your game. Um, but at the end of the day, a mm -hmm. fit correctly, you should be able to still hit a high bounce wedge off a firm surface. Um, that's what kind of some of the, the things out there is like, I can't hit a high bounce wedge off firm yeah. surface. But if it's fit right, and it, and you definitely can uh, if it fits you. You can throw right on the green and hit some pitch shots mm -hmm. and you can just get that healthy rub uh, with a high bounce mm -hmm. wedge off firm surface. So it really boils down to you. Yeah, for sure. It boils down to, because I, again, golfers use their wedges very differently. Um, but I think we should also note that it's very, it's almost common that golfers probably do fit into different types of bounces just in their own bag. Um, where maybe they need high bounce for, like you said, full swings. Maybe they need something lower bounce or mid bounce mm -hmm. for kind of around the green, opening the face. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of golfers maybe ignore that or don't uh, recognize that when selecting the wedges for their game. Right. I mean, the, the key is getting as much bounce as you can handle because that's going to give you the most consistency and the most forgiveness so you can hit those shots. So, you know, if you can go high bounce across the board um, and that, that works for you, that's great. That's, that's, that's optimum. Perfect. Well, JP, I don't have any other questions. I think I've got everything I need to know about bounce now. So. Uh, now it's time to go get fit. But thank you for joining us today, providing your insight. Um, and also, golfers, make sure you check out jpgolf.com. Make sure you check out, check out secondswing.com as well for everything you need to know about the JP Premier Wedges. And also follow uh, JP on Instagram, at jpgolfco, right? There's a right. bunch of photos, information about JP, and uh, all the stuff that you're working on there. That's right. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely.